Being self-employed is an emotional roller coaster that pushes many people to get off halfway. If you're a freelancer or you start a small agency business, then you know that in the beginning, it's all about trying to manage that when you're delivering, you're not selling. And when you're selling, you're not delivering. And so this creates a constant cash flow problem that keeps you in stress. But if you manage to survive, you're going to move now to the next level. And that is actually when you're going to start having more business that you can actually handle. It sounds really good, but it can be very stressful because now you need to start saying no to new clients. You cannot take vacations. The more business you have, the less time you have for yourself and the business. And you're constantly wondering if you're going to be able to deliver on the quality and if you're growing too fast. If this is the case for you, where you're finding yourself at a situation where you no longer have the capacity to serve your clients the way that you would like to, and you're worrying about the level of quality that you're able to deliver and the experience, then you definitely want to watch because in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of how you can actually turn things around and not only improve the quality, but also improve efficiency and your profits. Hi there. My name is Juan Guerra and we help freelancers that are ready to get their time back to transition out of delivery and start growing a scalable business that can run without them through our program. If you are interested, make sure to check the description below where you can go ahead and book a call and talk to me or a person in my team on how we can actually help transition from having a job to a business that can run without you. Back when we started our service business, it was exactly like this. You would focus on selling and then you have to deliver on the stuff that you sold. And so obviously that makes you struggle because you can't be doing both at the same time. It is really, really challenging because you want to make sure that you deliver the best results for customers. And also, obviously, that is within the comfort zone. That is the part where you get to excel, that you get to do the stuff that you like. And so you go all in delivering on the service. But eventually, as you deliver for more and more people, your services others are going to see it and are going to come your way. And so word of mouth is going to spread that you can actually help them. And now you start moving to the next level where you can sort of make a living with enough word of mouth because you get to have projects that allow you to cover your expenses. Now, the challenge here is that you now start taking more and more customers because that's exactly how it was for us. And they tend to be very different from one another. They are all recommending you completely different people. That's how it was for us. And so next thing we knew, we have this growth horizontally where we are delivering very different services. They look related to us, but they were not exactly related. And so we are spreading out and now we need different skills and we're constantly learning, we're stretching out. And because we're operating full time, now we have to take any project that comes our way because we got to pay rent. What we don't realize is that by doing this, we were actually keeping our business small. It wasn't until I started saying no and I started narrowing our focus that I saw growth in our business. But I didn't say no to every project. I just said no to the projects that didn't fit our new focus. And this made sure that even though in the beginning was a bit scary because we thought that we're going to have less business, what happened was that now by focusing, I could go out there and start attracting that type of customer. And as we deliver on projects, they also recommended us to that same type of customer. Also, those that saw our work, they knew exactly what they could expect from what we were doing. And so they started coming to hire us to deliver the service for them. This started growing and growing the business. But eventually, it got to the point where we ran out of capacity. We just didn't have the possibility to service more people because my time was limited. And that's when I started realizing that I was holding the business back. I had become the biggest bottleneck in the business. 
If you are lucky enough to stay in business that long where you start experiencing that problem, you normally have two choices. Either you say, I'm just going to increase my prices, take less people, and that's what I want to do. I don't want to build a team. I don't want to transition. I want to stay where I am. And that's great. That works for a lot of people. The thing is that you still are going to have a job. And after 20 years, you just have a job that you can't sell to anybody. Now, if you're like me, who was looking to grow a business that even though I wasn't thinking of selling, but I wanted to make sure that it could run without me. I wanted to ensure that I could create the processes and systems that would deliver the value that my customers wanted and I could service the team in helping them deliver that value to our customers. It took a lot of trial and error here and there, but the most important thing was that realization, that realization that I had become the biggest bottleneck in the business. I was the thing holding everything back. All the decisions had to go through me. It was only when I had time that I was able to review them. When an email came from a client, only when I had time, I could get back to it. And so it was really, really limiting. At the same time, this started to add a lot of stress on me because I see how little by little I have less and less time. And the constant changes and working with customers, what made it was that it starts taking away from my profit. I now have less time and I feel like I'm making less money because I'm constantly engaged in the business, replanning, and I'm not doing enough sales. So once I made the decision that I needed to transition out of delivery, I could start looking into how that step would look like. And it was very scary because I knew it involved hiring people, making that commitment of promising to somebody that their payment, their their salary is going to be there. And you know that money is still not really that stable. It is that commitment of having to coach somebody, teach them and making sure that even though now it's not you delivering the service, the customers are still going to be delighted. It is very stressful situation. It is very challenging. Suddenly you feel like you're operating in the dark. You're giving away the control and the thing that you have been doing all this time. But if you have gotten to that level where everything is running through you, that is the most necessary step. I want you to know that it is okay. Because when I was there, I was wondering if really that was the thing I needed to do. Now looking back, it is super clear. But when you're in it, you're not sure if that's the best step for the business. And so if you're finding yourself there, know that that is the next step for the business. Unless you want to have a job all your life that depends on you, then the next step is for you to start building that team and start moving out so that you can focus on stabilizing the sales and marketing area. It's not that your job is done simply because you transition out, but now it is scalable. And that's the next thing that I realized once I managed to transition out of delivery. And that was that as clients came in and we made sales and the team was going to deliver, I somehow started to feel like the business was becoming passive income. Now, it's not that I didn't have any work to do or I stopped doing anything else. But the thing that happened was that because now I was not involved in the delivery, then the income that I earned wasn't related to the actions, to to the service that we provided or the time that I put into something. My income had detached. It had separated from the actual work which meant that now my capacity, my income dependent on my skills to create systems that allow the business to give value to customers. The better those systems are, the more value we can provide and the more I could earn. This was for me incredible. And the reason why actually I decided to package all that experience into a system, into a program that now I help freelancers go through so that they can also transition out of delivery so that they can separate their income from their hourly work that they charge or from the packages and the services that they deliver and actually growing a business that gives them the freedom of time, place and money. 
the way that you feel when you start seeing that everything is working and clients are being fulfilled and satisfied without you having to be there, it's completely life changing. And the way you see the world after that, it's very, very, very different. So if you are at that crossroad where you feel that it's time to move to the next level, keep in mind that you don't need to go and hire somebody full time. You can even get started with subcontractors. Maybe you do that already. So maybe you bring in for 10 hours and you start working it out from there. Maybe you hire somebody between you and somebody else that you know and start working it out from there. But if you want more support and you have a feeling that this is the thing for you, then I invite you to check in the description below and book a strategy session. Apply for a program and let's see if we can really help you scale your freelancing business. Helping you get on the path to growing a scalable business is the reason why we do what we do. That's why we create content and put out programs to help you, give you that little push and guide you through the journey that it takes to get your time back, transition out of delivery and scaling that business business because in the process you're going to increase the quality of the service you're going to increase the efficiency and you're going to increase profit all this is extremely exciting because at the beginning when you started your journey as a freelancer when you went into business you envision this lifestyle this this business that will give you the resources that you wanted to have the life that you dreamed of and somewhere along the way we can get lost it can be quite hectic it can be quite challenging to find that place within that vision and so take a step back and if you feel that you're running out of capacity, I would recommend you to start experimenting, hiring people for 10 hours, maybe 15 hours, just a little bit to test the waters as you learn to recruit, hire, and eventually start delegating. But don't delegate, well, you're probably gonna start with tasks, but eventually what you want to get to is start delegating responsibilities. It is when you delegate responsibilities that you start getting off the stress from you, when you start getting off all that weight from you and onto somebody that can focus just on that and can do, at the end of the day, a way better job than you can because your focus is all over the place, jumping from project to project, all the different areas coming together and still trying to move forward. And so that's the journey as we experience it. And that's why we really encourage you to start narrowing down your focus. You're going to see immediate growth because now you know who to target. And as you get to the point where you feel that you're running out of capacity, then you can start bringing people in into the business. If this is something that you're struggling with right now, go ahead and share in the comments section below how you're dealing with capacity issues. How are you making sure that you're able to continue to deliver to clients without having to say no because you just don't have the space for them or because you're going on vacation. I want to hear about your experience and so go ahead and share in the comment section below. And if you like more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell because we're dropping a video every week on helping you scale your freelancing by transitioning out of delivery. My name is Juan Guerra. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.